What's happening everyone? My name is Alex and welcome back. Well, believe it or not, Xiaomi has a brand new phone. Well, Xiaomi's sub-brand called Poco. So this one is called the Poco X3 Pro. This is a phone that looks pretty much identical to the Poco X3 NFC. That was a phone that we got about four months ago. So what's so pro about this one? Well, inside this phone, we have a much more powerful CPU. So inside this phone, we have the Snapdragon 860. And for those of you that like benchmark scores, well, the Poco X3 NFC used to get a score of about 280,000, where with this one, so the Poco X3 Pro, we get an Antutu score of about 485,000. So this is a much more powerful device. So if you're into gaming or some graphic intensive tasks on your device, this one will do much better than the Poco X3 NFC. We have the same 6 gigs of RAM and I personally have the version that has 128 gigs of internal storage. The phone can also take an SD card, but um, you cannot use two SIM cards and an SD card at the same time. So you can only use one SIM card and an SD card um, at the same time. Aside from that, we have the same screen. This is a 6.67 inches IPS panel with a 1080p resolution, but with a high refresh rate. So 120 Hertz refresh rate, which is definitely nice, mostly when um, you are gaming. But this is technically the same screen that we had um, on the Poco X3 NFC. And just as I said in the video for that phone, um, even though the screen looks great, great viewing angles, really good um, colors, I wish to be a bit brighter because if you take the phone outside in direct sunlight, the screen isn't crazily bright. So I kind of wish the screen would have been a bit um, brighter. Either than that, the back is made out of plastic, just like the Poco X3 NFC. The frame seems to be made out of um, plastic um, as well. At the top here, we have that IR blaster. Um, we also have um, a 3.5mm audio jack at the bottom. We have the USB-C charging port and of course we have dual speakers. So we have one speaker at the bottom here and one speaker at the top. And the speakers do sound um, very good, just as they did on the Poco X3 NFC. And I guess this is a quick example so you can hear how the speakers um, sound. On the right hand side of the device here, just like we had um, on the Poco X3 NFC, we have the fingerprint scanner and the volume keys and the fingerprint scanner works uh, really well. So you just have to touch it and uh, the phone will unlock within half a second, I'm gonna say probably even less than that. So the fingerprint scanner does um, work really well. Now on the back here, we have um, a bunch of cameras. So we have the main camera, we have an ultra wide camera, and then we have a macro camera. Now, I believe that the ultra wide camera and the macro camera are the same as we had on the Poco X3 NFC, but the main camera seems to be different. Um, I believe this one is using a 48 megapixel sensor, where um, the Poco X3 NFC was using a 64 megapixel sensor. Now, the picture quality isn't that different, but overall, I still believe that the Poco X3 NFC was taking somewhat better pictures in some situations. Of course, these are some pictures that I took um, with this one, the Poco X3 Pro. So we have a night mode available for um, the ultra wide lens and for the main um, camera. So if you take pictures at night, the phone still does um, pretty decent. For video recording, the device can do 4K at 30 frames per second. And we also have EMI stabilization for those 4K at 30 frames um, per second. Now, it almost looks like the video quality is better than the Poco X3 NFC, at least in my opinion. Um, of course, this is a quick example of a recording that I've done um, with this device the other day. So overall, the cameras are a bit different than the Poco X3 NFC, but you can't really go wrong with either device. For a budget-friendly device, I think um, that um, the cameras are decent um, enough. And the same kind of goes for the front-facing camera. We have the same 5160 mAh battery, but to this one, so the Poco X3 Pro, we don't get as much um, screen on time as we used to get to the Poco X3 NFC. So this one you typically get between 8 and 11 hours of screen on time, depending what you do with the device. And that makes sense because we have a much more powerful CPU that needs um, more power. 
The phone also supports fast charging, so charging this from 0 to 100 is done in about an hour and 20 minutes or just under an hour and 20 minutes, so still pretty fast for um, such a massive battery. The phone runs MIUI 12, which is based on Android 11, and yes, this one feels a bit snappier than the Poco X3 NFC, just a tiny bit snappier, mostly when you switch in between applications, when you open new applications, this one does feel um, a bit quicker than the other one, but not a massive, massive difference as that Antutu score would suggest. So all the apps that I've tried on it, I've tried Facebook, Instagram, I've tried a bunch of games, so everything works extremely well. The phone does get a bit warm when you're playing games, so if you play Call of Duty for about an hour, the phone does feel um, pretty warm. I don't think the Poco X3 NFC felt as warm as um, this one, but the Poco X3 NFC didn't do that great for um, some games. This one does much better um, for those graphic intensive tasks. So if you're looking for performance, this is definitely one that um, you should consider. Of course, the GPS unit inside it works really well. It takes maybe half a second um, for um, the device to find your location. We have a variety of sensors available and yes, we have NFC as well. So if you wanna make payments with the phone, um, you can definitely make payments um, with it. Now, should you buy this over the Poco X3 NFC? Well, if you're looking for more performance, if you play a lot of games, if you edit videos, for example, on your phone, this one will do much better than the Poco X3 NFC. But either than that, there isn't that much of a difference between this one and the Poco X3 NFC. The phones look pretty identical. I kind of wish this would have been a bit different just so we can differentiate them a bit more. But overall, for a budget phone, mostly if you're just switching phones now, um, yes, this is a very powerful device that does um, extremely well for pretty much everything. And much better um, value than a lot of other devices that um, are available on the market. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, don't forget to press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.